Hello everyone, today we're going to be covering using the Sidekick gem. This is a useful gem if you need to run some background jobs, similar to the cron video we used for scheduling background jobs in the past. Sidekick sort of the uh, one of the standards in, in Rails, I guess, for running these uh, background threaded jobs. Effectively, pretty simple setup. The only caveat is if you're running a Redis uh, server, which you're going to be running locally probably, you can check if you're running on a specific version by typing redis-server space dash dash version. You want to make sure you're on at least version 6 point something. I can't remember exactly what it is. Otherwise, you'll get a uh, Redis error when you try to schedule a job. It'll tell you, hey, we're trying to connect to the Redis client, but it's like the wrong version. So make sure you're updating it. If you need help updating it, I'll have a link to this article in the video description. It did cover using version six of it, but it's up to version seven now, as you can see in my console. This will also just install version seven as the, of the time of this video. You just run one command, two commands, three commands, and four commands that will then start your server, or that will install your server. You then want to stop your existing server by running a psaux. Type in a grep for sidekick, not sidekick, for Redis. And then you want to grab this ID right here, which is in my case 67270. And then you want to run a sudo kill-9 for that process ID. That will stop your Redis. And if you have it set to automatically start afterwards, it'll restart, but it'll now be on the appropriate version. So that's the only caveat. Now, in terms of actually running and installing Redis or Sidekick itself, I don't know why I'm getting these two confused so much. Uh, we do need to create a new Rails app. We'll say this is going to be the Rails uh, Rails new video, and I'm going to pass in the dash J for ES build. This is optional. I'm going to be using the proc file, but you can run this uh, manually. The reason why we're using the proc file is just so we can throw the uh, Sidekick stuff into the same file and run one command to run everything. If you're not using a proc file, then you just want to basically open up multiple tabs on your dev machine and make sure that on production, you're running all of the servers you need to uh, when you when you try to start stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and CD into the video. I'm going to do a Rails G controller pages home because we need to call this job from somewhere. And then I'm going to do a bundle add for the sidekick gem. The next thing we can do is a, assuming, assuming this finishes, a Rails G sidekick colon job and we'll call it hello. That will generate a sidekick job for us inside of app sidekick hello underscore job dot rb. Also gives us a test uh, if you're so inclined. Now I'm going to go ahead and run the code dot command to open up VS code here. Then we can uh, hopefully close out of everything and move this over here. If I hit control B, I can open up my side panel and then we can come into the config and the routes.rb. We can change this git to a root and this slash to a hash to give us the home page. Now in here, we're gonna do two other things. The first one is the, another link that we'll have here where we add in the web UI component for Sidekick. To do that, we need to come up to the top and we need to require Sidekick slash web. We then need to mount the Sidekick web server. So to do that, we can type mount capital S side KIQ colon colon capital W web. And then we set this to be slash sidekick. They also cover how to do, uh, oops, how to do authentication here. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do the authentication. One, if you have device, you can just do an authenticate user. You can say authenticate user do. And I mean, we've covered this before in some device tutorials, but effectively what this allows you to do is uh, make sure that device forces a user to log in before they access a specific route. Now, let's say, um, you know what, actually, it might just be easier if we just really quick uh, add device. We can do a bundle add device, and then we'll just generate some user accounts, add some admins to it, and we'll just do this real fast. So we can do a uh, Rails G device colon install command, a Rails G device user command. I don't want to like just tell you how to do this and not explain it. It feels kind of lazy. Now let's do a Rails G migration, add admin to user. We'll say admin colon boolean. And then we can go ahead and come into our DB and our seeds and we'll just do a user.create with a email of dean at example.com. And then we'll pass in a password and a password confirmation with uh, the admin set to true. 
something like that. We can go ahead and copy this. We'll paste in a second one. We'll make this one false and we'll make this or schmuck john at doe.com. So Dean will be an admin, John will not be an admin. And then in our routes, what we can do is we can make sure that when we call authenticate user, we pass in a Lambda function, which allows us to check if this user is a u.admin question mark. So if admin's true, then this will return true. Okay, so let's do a Rails DB colon migrate for this device nonsense. Then let's come over to the side panel and come down to our proc file. And this is where we're gonna be doing um, the, uh, the, the command to start the, the uh, sidekick server. I don't know why that was such a hard sentence to say. Uh, but we can come over here, we can name this whatever we'd like. I'm gonna call mine sidekick though. And I'm gonna say this needs to run a bundle exec sidekick. And then you can optionally pass in a config file with the dash C flag and then wherever you want to put it. In my case, I'll put this config inside of the uh, config folder. So we can come over to the side, make sure this doesn't error out, and we can right click on config, new file, sidekick.yaml, and we'll just leave it empty, but this at least allows us to have it uh, set up just in case we want one. Now at this point, we can go ahead and run a bin slash dev that will start up our Rails server, our JavaScript, and our Sidekick server. If you want to run Sidekick on your own and you don't want to use a proc file, when you run your Rails S, which is this command, you then also want to run the bundle exec Sidekick command in another uh, tab. Okay, so we have that. Now let's go ahead and let's pop over to our pages and our homepage. So in our homepage, I guess because we're doing this uh, this current user stuff to make sure we're logged in as a admin, we'll say if current user, then we want to have a link to log out, right? With a uh, destroy user session path and a data of uh, turbo, I forget, is it like turbo method of delete? Something like that. Then we want to do a else, we need to have a link to log in. And we're not gonna do the sign up path because we uh, already have the accounts created. There we go, something like that. And then we can do the end right here. Now let's come over here, let's refresh and make sure this works. We do have the login link. Okay, let me log in as Dean at example.com. Oops, example.com with a password of password. Password. I forgot to seed the database. Stop the server and then run a Rails DB colon seed command and then we can do a bin slash dev. Okay, so let's do that. Refresh dean at example.com with a password of password. There we go, we're logged in. Now, if we're logged in as the current user, let's do a H1 that says you uh, current underscore user dot admin question mark. And then we'll just say admin is set to whatever. And then we'll close this H1. Go ahead and refresh. This is a admin account, cool. Now what we wanna do is a button to uh, and we'll say, uh, say hello async, right? Async. This will take us to the hello path that we created with a remote of true. Something like that. Now let's come over to our controllers real quick. Inside of our pages controller, we want to create a def hello method. And then inside of here, we want to do a, we called it a hello job. We'll say dot perform underscore async. And then we want to uh, just perform this, this job. We can then come over to our sidekick and our hello job. Inside of here, we have this uh, perform method. We can uh, effectively do whatever we want. Here, maybe what we wanna do is uh, in our perform, we wanna say puts hello, hello world, right? Something like that. Run that, come over here and refresh. Now we have this button too, but we don't have this path. So we do have to come into our routes again and actually create this. So down here, we'll just say, do a post to hello. And then let's post this to the pages controller and the hello path. We can save that, come over here and refresh. And now if we say hello async, you'll see that it prints hello world out to the, to the console. 
but how can you really trust me that this is async? Now, if you actually study this, you'll see it does the post request, it schedules the job, it then says no template found, and then it says it completed with no content, and then it does the hello world. But let's actually make sure this is running in the background so you don't have to take some stupid YouTuber's word for it. To check, we can do a dot perform at, and we can say, let's perform this 10 dot seconds dot from underscore now. So this will guaranteeably force this to run in the background. And we can now test this. We can refresh. We'll click the button. You'll see all of the post stuff happens. I can now like navigate around the application if I'd like to. I could log out. And then after we've done all of that down here, you should eventually see this job run. And there you go. So that is running in the background. Now, why did we do the user account stuff? Well, because if I log in as Dean at example.com with a password of password, and I'm at, logged in as an admin, we can now come over to a, another link, which we'll just put in the, the homepage. So if we're an admin, we'll do a link to monitor jobs, and then we'll send this to the sidekick path. So what's this do? Well, we need to, oops, the sidekick web path, my bad. We need to be able to make sure that if we're running all of these jobs, that we're not just clogging up the CPU. And to do that, you can have a path that is a dedicated monitor for that stuff. So this is the Sidekick background uh, web panel. Obviously, you don't want your users to all be able to access this, which is why we forced the authentication. So if I like open up a new tab and I try to go to that URL, it'll force me to sign in. And if I log in as john at doe.com with a password of password, John is not a admin either, so he won't be able to access this URL. If you go here, you see admin false. If I click monitor jobs, it doesn't work. So that's just something to uh, to be aware of is you can like restrict access to this. What does it do? It shows you how many jobs are running at any given point, and it shows you how many jobs you've run in like the past week, the past month, three months, et cetera. It's just a whole background like uh, logger or monitor system. Now, if we come over here, we can fire up a bunch of these, click this a bunch, and then you should see after the five second polling interval passes that uh, this grabs the uh, currently running job. So we have seven jobs scheduled right here, and now you can see these jobs just fired. It forces this line to go up. We can see that there are zero failed jobs with six of them processed. We have no more scheduled. We just had the seventh one fire. So that's sort of what that does. You can see like the busy processes. You can see the computer that's running stuff and how many threads it has allocated. Uh, you can see what the queue's looking like. Let's just go ahead and schedule a bunch more of these. You can see how many times you've like retried, uh, how many times you've scheduled or what you have scheduled, which right here we see we have a bunch scheduled and we have some dead processes and then we have our metrics, which just allows us to see some more analytics. So. Overall, it's a very powerful tool. It gives you a bunch of functionality. This dashboard alone is so much better than just blindly running like cron jobs in the background. Hopefully this becomes useful for you. Uh, of course, you sort of need a reason to run a background job, but maybe if you're making like an API request, maybe you're like, I don't know, using the chat open AI thing in the future and you want to uh, be able to like ask the AI to do stuff through an API request. You probably don't want to have to wait for it to type everything. You just want to fire that off as the user like clicks submit. It processes it in the background, comes back to the Rails server, and then maybe the Rails server does like a turbo broadcast to update the frame, right? Just something like that. It's it's more for processes that take longer or for things that you want to schedule uh, out in the future. But yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully it was helpful, and hopefully I will see you in the next video.